Welcome, everybody. This is Crossing Paths Ministry, and my name is Dr. Ernie DePasquale, and I'm privileged today to be the guest today uh, on this show. And Don Reed today they invited me, and it's, again, my privilege. And Don, we crossed paths years ago, didn't we? Well, I'll tell you what, we, we're not that old. I mean, uh, you aren't that <laughs> old. But anyways, yeah, that was uh, one day I, uh, Florence Byrus, that you know, Arthur and uh, a wonderful witness for the Lord, her and her husband, you know, which are both deceived, okay, mm-hmm, yes. uh, called me. She said, uh, you got to meet this man, uh, I mean, Dr. De Pasquale. And at uh, first I couldn't even say the name right, you know me. But anyways, I called you up and we met, right? Right. And I said, hey, uh, would you like to be on TV, and I like what you said when, right? <laughs> Just when, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was it was after a, 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 a fond, very fond uh, breakfast we had at Bob Evans and Warren, and uh, getting to know you, we had so many similarities. I, the, the difference was how old you were, but other than that, your your interests were identical to mine. Your past was very similar, and uh, we hit it off right from the bat. Yeah. And it was Florence that that really got us together. Florence Byrus, that beautiful lady that's passed away, yeah. she's the one that. Uh, helped me with my book, and from there I met you, and from there everything blossomed. It was beautiful. Before we get into our testimony, I gotta catch up something on you. <laughs> Go ahead. Remember we went and played basketball? Tell me about that. You saw, oh, yeah, that's, that's where. They called the, the tree, uh, Gus Macker, wasn't it? Go it was ahead. the Gus what Macker, yes. There? It was so unbelievable because, again, I told you that we had similarities of interest, but our best and most favorite sport was basketball. But. Uh, I was in your office one day, this was after we had breakfast and after I got to know you, that I saw a Gus Macker picture. I didn't know up to that point that you were in the Gus Macker years ago, which I played at least five times, five different years, and uh, won trophies. I have a, a trophy case down there in my basement. And I saw your picture, and then it brought back this horrific memory. I think I played this guy. <laughs> it was so unbelievable. It was when I went to your office, I looked at the picture, and I. I saw your team, and then I said, I remember those guys. You looked a lot different back then, by the way. (laughs) And uh, I said, at the time, you know, you were (laughs) younger than I am right now, but I was way younger. You were like 20 years older than me. And I remember when we met you in the final uh, or the semifinal, I thought we were going to just walk right through you. I I thought there was no way these guys 20 years older than us were going to beat us. but we had barely beat you, I think by one point. And it was something that I'll never forget because we ended up going to the finals and winning. You ended up going to what, the toilet bowl? We won the toilet bowl. Yeah. You won the toilet bowl. <laughs> First 20 teams that got kicked out. It was unbelievable. But uh, when I saw that picture, and it, it just kind of shook me to the point where I met this guy years ago. And then I remember watching you play and how good you were. And I said, when I get his age, I want to be as good as he is. <laughs> and then when I met you with Bob Evans, I said, I want to be a, a Christian like you are because you would just light it up the room. Oh, thank you. But you know, it's funny how he said, you know, you were, I remember the one thing you said, these old dudes, you call it. <laughs> we don't have any problem beating these old dudes, uh, right? Geezers, I think I used <laughs> yeah, the word yeah. geezers. But I said, there's no way. But boy, I, and by the way, I said it before, I'll say it again. You were not Christian like on that basketball court. Uh, well, I mean, pulling shirts, yeah, fouling. At uh, the golf course, you don't, you know, <laughs> my facial split wedge, foot wedge, I ain't going to tell about that. But anyways, uh, tell me, you were born and raised and uh, yeah. somewhere along the line, you being a doctor now, uh, it, how'd you meet the Lord? Uh, truly, Don, I had a humble past. Um, I was born and raised in Hubbard, Ohio, and um, my parents were Catholic, and I was raised Catholic. I was the altar boy. I went to church every Sunday. I was uh, baptized. I was, as a, as a child, I was, um, I w- received Holy Communion, went to confession, did all the things that I thought were requirements of, of religion that I knew of. I didn't know anything more. But I, um, I felt very blessed because my grandmother, uh, my parents, they saw to it, number one, that I believed in God, and number two, that I knew education was the most important thing. God and education, God and education. And it's got me to where I am today. So I look back and I, I praise God that he put me in such a, a beautiful family. And, uh, but, you know, there's things that go on in the world that... Uh, the Lord is in charge of, and that's Amen. what he, he took control of my life, Don. He took control. But it was after a long uh, a walk where, you know, I prayed, I went, I, I confessed my sins, I went to communion almost every Sunday from the time that I was seven years old. Uh, I just felt that was an obligation. It was truly a ritual yeah, to me. Ritual, you know, yeah. It was something that I did, but you know, God honors that. You know, he knows that that, that 
that man, he knows from the day I was born to the day I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. He knew what was in my heart. So he orchestrated, I think, my whole life. But um, I changed. I really did. I, as a humble kid that didn't think I was going to do much, I had high aspirations. Um, and God just, I look back on it, Don, and I, the, the sovereign Lord is so good. He's so good to me. And I can't, but, but I, I did, if you want to th um, hear about my past, I did um, work hard, what my dad said, and that's get good grades, but I always wasn't that way. I'm, I was like a C-plus student on, in, in uh, uh, grade school. Then I went to junior high, and I realized, hey, I better start stepping it up a little bit. But it wasn't until I went to high school that, and then I knew I was going to go to college that I knew that I had to really start getting serious about grades. So anyhow, I always had church a Sunday ritual that I would not miss. Sure. And I would always go to communion. Yeah. And I was an altar boy all the way through. So I was participant in communion. And I knew the reverence and the worship part of it. I, I was all into that. But as far as a personal relationship with the Lord and knowing the Bible, I knew that was over my head. I, I mean, that wasn't ever preached to me. But, you know, the Lord t took it on himself to say, you know, I'll take care of that part. But the problem was, was after I got out of high school, I, oh, by the way, I, um, uh, basketball was uh, my, my main goal in high school, actually. And I, I did excel in basketball after getting cut like Michael Jordan in French, freshman year, I got cut. <laughs> but then I came through and they got a scholarship to go to YSU to play basketball, which I did. And I um, uh, had uh, on an academic scholarship, too. I graduated um, uh, uh, on the high merit list at YSU, and then I went to medical school, and it was um, a hard process because I met my wife while I was my senior year at college, and um, I met her at a dance, and um, never thought I was going to get married. By the way, I, I I didn't think I didn't know what love was. I just loved all women. I didn't mm. think that I was going to ever focus on one. I didn't think that was possible. But the Lord. When I saw my wife, it was like love at first sight. Praise the Lord. And, I, and he says, okay, and he, I truly did. He said, stop, and I did. I just stopped, and she was my life. She was everything, um, and she still is. But um, anyhow, I went through um, college uh, and did very well academically, and then uh, even, even um, sports-wise, I played baseball and basketball in college. But when, when I applied to medical school, that year, in 1975, I got an interview at Philadelphia School of Medicine, and I thought I was going to get in. Because once you get an interview, you're usually in. So I thought I was going to go from Youngstown State, a BS degree, age 21, right in the medical school. And it didn't happen that way. God, he, he, there was some seating difficulties in the classroom that they didn't have. And they wrote me a letter back saying, sorry, we can't accept you because uh, the seating capacity is not there to apply again next year. And my whole life was shattered. So anyhow, luckily I had interviewed for Abbott Laboratories and uh, I was a, uh, worked as a chemist. And, and we, had to, we did get married uh, the, after my graduation, but instead of going into medical school, I went into, uh, sh we went into Ashland, Ohio, where uh, Abbott Laboratories was located. And I worked a year there for Abbott Laboratories. During that time, I still, there was, it was, God was so funny though, you know, he, he has a sense of humor. I, <laughs> I, I remember this lady, uh, we met and I'll never forget her. She gave me a, we went to a doing, she says, you got to go to this function. And it was like a, it was kind of like a, a, a revival. And Beverly and I went because we didn't know anybody in Ashland. And I could remember this because I still have the Bible she gave me. It wasn't one of those little Bibles. It was a big Bible. And she, I remember how enthusiastic these people were for the Lord. But Don, I had no interest whatsoever. I went there just to acquaint myself with these people, and I did enjoy it, but the music was not appealing to me, you know, the worship music, sure, yeah. and I didn't know the, 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 the joy in their hearts. I didn't see it. I you kept looking at my clock. You probably saw something that you there wanted. There was something, yeah, there was something there that, that, that I was missing, but it wasn't on my heart. I was thinking, I'm going to medical school, yeah. and i got to get my life going here yeah. on earth. And well, how did I mean, you get to medical school? Well, see, after, after I uh, got rejected at Philadelphia, they said to reapply. So I figured a lot of people do. They go to get their master's degree. Some get their PhD degrees and reapply. But I wanted to go right through. I wanted to be a young guy and get right in. And I didn't. Um, but I reapplied the next year. And um, it was amazing. It was, a, it was a true act of God because I didn't think I was, I was getting no letters back. I was getting no 
uh, calls and I said, Lord, maybe you want me to be something else. Maybe I'd be a chiropractor, but I didn't want to be a chemist. I really mm -hmm. didn't. I worked there, but it wasn't enjoyable to me. Praise the Lord. But what I got one day was, I, and I did, Don, I prayed. I go to church and I pray to the Lord, if it's your will to make me a doctor, and I knew it was him going to make me a doctor because I, I said, then so be it. But if not, tell me what I'm supposed to be. I had a, I, I prayed about this and I'd go home. I remember every day after work and I'd check my apartment mailbox and I'd say, oh, I hope there's a letter. I hope there's a, no letter. All of a sudden, and I can't say it was after one or two prayers, but I was at faultless. I mean, I was at Abbott Laboratories on the job and they told me, hey, there's a phone call for you. And I got a phone. I took the phone and they said, this is Des Moines College of osteopathic medicine. Uh, we have your application. Can you come for an interview tomorrow? I said, tomorrow? <laughs> I'm from Ohio. I got to drive all the way to Iowa. I said, yeah, I'll do it. They go, can you be here at 10 o'clock? I said, I'll be there. So anyhow, I, um, I got on the phone, made arrangements, and I flew out to Iowa, got, uh, took the interview, came back home, got a letter the next week saying, you're in, you're starting in June. In medical school? In medical school. And okay. that, that's how it worked. How long did it take? And then you went oh, through? Oh, and then the f ironic thing was I wanted to be in and out in four years after college, which I couldn't because I, I had to work a year. This school was the last of the schools that were three years. Yeah. So I w went to medical school all year round for three years and, com and did all the work, all the studies of medicine in wow. three years instead of four. And God, it was all God. I understand too that you also are a chiropractor. That well, at, oste at the osteopathic schools, we we're trained as allopathic MDs and, os and chiropractic work. But it's termed uh, uh, osteopathic okay. because it wraps up both. Yeah, yeah. Then, then, then you went in business now because time's running out. Yeah, I, I know. I got to get right into it. No, 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 I know it's so much. Yeah. I, I, then I went, uh, so after medical school, uh, supposed to go into a residency for four years, I went into a residency one year, completed in one year. So God blessed me with a three year medical school, one year residency, usually four year medical school, four year residency. I did it in four years, the whole thing. Instead of eight, I did it in four. I wow. started a practice when I was 27 years old and and I and God has overly where, blessed. Where was me. your practice at? It was in Orwell, Ohio, which is a real in Ashtabula County, north of Trumbull. But let me tell you one other thing. I told God, and I and I before I got my acceptance to Des Moines, I said, Lord, if you if you get me accepted to medical school, I'll be the best doctor that I could be for you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I I told him that. And there's a there's a little twist that goes on with the later part that I was. After he made me, I mean, I felt like Solomon. He blessed me with so much in the way of uh, riches and, and, and just health and everything. Yeah. And then I wanted to walk away. I was so burned out at the end of uh, age 47. I, I wanted to walk away. I wanted just to get out of medicine because I had, medicine had changed, had gone to many HMOs, PPOs, that doctors, you ask anybody in the, in the 90s how things have changed for us that started in the 80s. I wanted out, and, and I did. But you had money and everything. Oh, but, I had everything set. I, I, I was so blessed. You weren't born again at this oh, time. Oh no, right? I, I, I was just thinking of. Uh, uh, I was just thinking. Okay, I did my job for God. I, 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 I helped all these people, save lives, help people. Now I'm just burned out. I've been in practice 20 years. I'm 47 years. I wasn't 47. Actually, I was 44, and I, and I, uh, I said, I'm, I'm leaving. I can't do this anymore. I don't need. And then I looked at my my savings, I said, you know, I never believe it. I could live the rest of my life. And I, uh, on this, and I said, I'm leaving. I'm done. I don't need this anymore. But I forgot about God. I oh. forgot about the promise I made to him. I said, I'll be the best doctor for the rest of my life. Yeah. But when I was burned out, it was like, thanks, Lord, but I've got to go. I got to go. You like me when I had my motel and all the business. Yeah. I, had, I had seven businesses going. I had money, money, everything right. Yeah. Now, when was that day that you, boy, that's the exciting part. It of was. It was. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I I'd made all these preparations like in 1997 and University Hospital in Cleveland contacted me and they had it all planned. Whenever I wanted to turn it over, the keys to them was fine, but I was working from 97 to 2001. 2001, I was still just part time up there. And that's the day and I and I had my plans were to leave practice 2001 and I was going to go just travel the world. Probably I wanted to go live in Aruba. I wanted just a life of Riley. <laughs> I, I just was, I said, I deserve it, Lord, right? Well, he didn't think so because on 9-11, you know, as you know, many people are born again when they're just down and out like you, Don. I mean, you're just, you just have no other word. You're, you're at the ends of yourself. You know, yes. I wasn't, I was at the top of my game. Yes. I was 47 and I was still ready to play basketball at a high level. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to go places, swim, snorkel, scuba dive. I wanted to do it all. And on 
I'll tell you what, I don't know about the rest of the world, but the Lord knew that that's what it, I needed to break me because I wasn't afraid of any financial problems. I had that all solved. I wasn't, my health was 100%. My, and my, anything that went wrong with my family, I could either fix medically or I could fix financially. I had it all. Nothing scared me. And I, this is a humble guy that my dad, I mean, he didn't, I was a, uh, just middle of the road, maybe more to the poor side when I was growing up. Now I had everything. But the Lord said, 9-11 is what it took, Don, because I thought I was going to die that day. What happened? On 9-11, I was working, and there's a TV in my waiting room. And like a normal day, uh, patients were in there. And this one guy that was in the service, he was retired. He, came, he was in my first room. I'll never forget. I opened the door, come in to see him. I said, George, how you doing? He goes, did you, hey, did you look in your TV in the waiting room? I said, no. And this was 9-11. Uh, he says, World War III starting. And I thought he was joking, but he never jokes. This guy was very serious, always worried about his heart and his blood pressure. And I was serious with him. I said, you're joking, right? He says, no. He goes, let's, I said, I got to see this. So I went out and I looked at the TV and I saw the, the jet planes crashing into the, uh, the Twin Towers. And they had it on, on uh, video. And I said, oh, man. I said, and then they reported this. They go, one went down in Pittsburgh. And then there's another abducted that are, that's going towards Cleveland. When they said is going towards Cleveland, you see, I'm, the, I'm on direct route from Pittsburgh or from Washington to Cleveland. That plane was coming over Orwell, and I knew it. And I thought it was going to come down and land close to, and just with whatever they had on it, I didn't know. But I thought maybe they have nukes on this. But I thought I was going to die that day, literally. This is the first time I was a scare. I was actually afraid. I never was afraid. I'm never afraid because I was never sick. I was always healthy. I had all the money I needed to fix things. Now. The Lord took it out of my control. I'm going to die because this plane's coming from Washington to Cleveland. And I'm in the midst, and I felt the Lord was getting me. He said, you know, you lied to me. You said that you were going to stay with me and work the rest of your life, and you're making plans because that was September. I was retiring in December and, and just moving on to the fun life. But I said, geez, I deserve this because I, I forgot my promise. I was supposed to work the rest of my life for the Lord and help people. But anyhow, I... Uh, I, uh, that when when I when I walked out of the waiting walked out of the uh, uh, exam, uh, the waiting room and after looking at the TV I don't know how I made it the rest of the day seeing patients and writing prescriptions and doing procedures I still I was a, the Lord did it for me because nobody got hurt that I know of but the point was after I came back I went into my uh, X-ray developing room I, that's where I met the Lord face to face Don I'll tell you I truly met because wow. in my I went in that room because there's two inch thick lead all around including the door the door it's pitch black you can't see your face hand in front of you I went in that door and I never went in there all, only my nurses do but I went in at that time and I closed the door behind me and I looked up and I couldn't see anything except I said Lord I need wisdom. I need revelation because I don't understand you. I know where I'm going if I die today. <laughs> and I needed a priest in a confessional booth and there was none around. <laughs> so I knew I was going to, I couldn't confess my sins because I didn't even know for sure if he'd accept my confession without a priest. So I said, Lord, I am so sorry. <clears throat> but if you give me another chance, I says, I just need some wisdom and revelation to get my life back and I will align it with you. I pro and I made him this promise, but I said, I, and, uh, but I put God on the spot. I said, Lord, I need wisdom and revelation. I just don't have it. <laughs> and then he says to me, get into the church more f and get into the Bible. And I started reading the Bible. And by the yeah. way, before that, Don, I couldn't read the Bible. It was so dry. I tried so it. So you become born again. I was on born 9? again, 9-11. That was it. And, you're, and that, see, that's what people don't understand. You know, all the tradition you were raised in, yeah. in the Catholic it is good. It just doesn't make it. It, it don't make it. It I, doesn't make it. I was it. a Methodist, and if I'd have died, I'd have went to hell. But you can be a Methodist and be born again. That, you're a Catholic. That's right. You'd have died and went to hell. I was so you, afraid. But, but you know, and you can be born again as a Catholic. You know, so we got to get this message out. Yes, that all is. the intelligence, Ernie, that oh, you had. No your difference. Doctor degrees, what all no. of these things, right? You were like me in a sense, money like we can relate, right? I had money. I had motels, women. You had no fear of God, no. evidently, no, right? No. You were doing things like I. Well, not me, like I'm, I wasn't bad, but you. I mean, I was maybe. I say, Paul, look over, move over. I mean, I did a lot of things, right? But didn't, don't you? Isn't that the truth? You yeah. no, no I, fear of God. You were raised in a good Catholic after, family. After, I, really, I did the, the things that I thought were the requirements uh, of me. But in my deep in my heart, I knew that I was not presentable to heaven. I, there's too much. But I didn't understand that. I, I just knew my conscience was, you're not right with God. You don't have a right relationship. And I, because I always feared him. Uh, you said you didn't fear. Well, I did because I, I distanced myself from him. I was like, when I left church, I just, 
my life now is my life, but my, my, I owe you a one day out of seven, Lord, and I'm there, but after that, it's mine. Yeah. And I lived the way I wanted, and I said, this isn't the way it's meant to be, but I don't know any other way. So I said, Lord, I need wisdom and revelation because I know this isn't the way to get to heaven. Don't you think, Ernie, on that book, can you hold that book up there just for a minute that you, that you wrote, right? Yes, this uh, is the book that I wrote. It's, uh, I, I titled it, You Better Believe It. Where You Spend Eternity Depends On It. And I wrote this book for everybody, including myself, because see, I, I didn't understand the, the salvation plan of God. I, I thought it was works mixed with faith. You have to have faith. I knew you had to believe in Jesus Christ. I knew that. But I thought that, you know, it's like going to college and getting a test at the end and you, or uh, evaluated after you're done. Are you going to pass or are you going to fail? But the uh, salvation wasn't like that. And I said, I didn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that, that um, what I discovered, the grace of God revealed to me that, you know, it's not about you. It's about the Lord. And I, I put it in this, in this book because it's truly the, the, the Word of God, a synopsis of salvation and how I obtained it. And I hope people that really don't know about God's method of salvation, there it is. You well, better believe it. You know, Ernie, too, uh, uh, there's a lot of medical doctors that you know in your profession. You know, probably sometime they'll shun you or... Oh, they, they, they were always wondering what changed? How, how come I changed? My friends, Don, that was the worst. My friends... Um, I, I, I had no, uh, I, now my focus was on reading the Bible and, and, uh, so it become alive, uh, alive. What, what, oh, what it was not, it was a living word. See, I, as I said, I could read medical books, anatomy and physiology and pharmacology, and I'd, I'd understand it. I would, I love reading it. I pick up the Bible and I tried. It was so dry, I just pull, fall asleep. But when I was born again and I asked God, you better be careful. This is what the priest told me when he saw me going to church. Because I started going to church every day before work. I'd go to church every day and then have the Bible with me for a change. And he says, Ernie, what's come over you? He says, this is not like you. Because <laughs> the church was right there at the hospital. And I says, well, I asked God to give me wisdom and revelation. He oh. said, "He said, be careful what you ask God for. He'll give uh, it to you. You know, Ernie, you've been a blessing to me and my wife. And me too, John. And it's, I'll tell you, it's been a privilege. And I didn't even get to the point where the, the, the aftermath of meeting you and how you invited me so warmly and uh, welcomed me into your ministry. And I'll tell you, I grew. And knowing you, you were, and I said when you were on the basketball court, I want to be like you. When I met you at Bob Evans, I really meant it. I want to grow up to be just a Christian like you because you. you walk the walk. Thank you. And that's what I emulate. I want to walk the walk like but you see, do. You see, we rub off of each other. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, one thing, our time's running out. You know, Ernie, uh, when you committed your life to the Lord, a lot of people think that going to church and, and uh, thank God for the Catholic Church and the things that they taught you in the back and right. the Presbyterian and the Methodist, you know, but you know what's happening I today. Know. They're keeping their eyes on the priest or the oh. preacher. We have, we have ministries now, uh, presidents in United States trying to say that it's okay for um, uh, Jesus would be here today. He'd say marriage, gay marriage is okay. All this false doctrine, right? It is. So the church is getting in a lot of false doctrine in a lot of churches. You know that, I right? Know, I but know. It's your commitment and your walk in the Lord since I've seen you. And you got a beautiful wife and what's it, little Marlene? Say hello to Marlene. Marlena. Hi, Marlena. <laughs> Marlena. That's my granddaughter, yeah. my two boys and my wife. Yeah, yes, they're, you know, they're my, my life right now. And you know, and, and that's why as I, I think God crossed paths with you and me. Even, even though there was a basketball attraction in there, right, right? right? But the Word of God that we got in, I just yeah. love the way you oh. preach. You preach at our church Sunday morning at uh, Cedar Avenue Bible Church. Yeah, and, Pastor Les Kirk, and, and, and then Pastor we share, we, Kirk. I'm, I'm once yeah, a right. month, you're once a month. Yes, and God will you help me out on my TV program. And you also minister now in other churches. And yes, I'm invited to go other places, and on Thursdays I do a Bible study and uh, a preaching every Thursday in front of the pulpit. So it, God has blessed me, and my co mission, sole mission right now is Mark 16, verses 15 and 16. Yeah. God told me that. Yeah, but see, see, this is what's wrong with ministry today. Look, look, you come off of our ministry and you're out doing the work of yes, God, right? Yes. And you fill in for me every once in a while. Yes. Gene Blakeman has a ministry beautiful out there called uh, uh, Come Alive. Come Alive, right? We've had Linda Weber. That A lot of these people got there. If it wasn't for Crossing Paths. Crossing Paths, that's a perfect name because they cross paths right. and we've crossed paths with other with you, the uh, and and we've spun off and and it's yeah. blessed the blessed the ministry. And, and, and you know one thing too that and I, I can say this honestly, this book here that you've donated to our ministry, yes. right? We we're going to mail it out to you if you so desire to have it out there. We will send this book to yes. you, right? And, and it, you can and it, all the donations go to Crossing Paths because it is 
uh, their ministry is so uh, warmly accepted. They need help. And like any ministry out there, you know, this isn't for free, but that book is as far as uh, to them. So, but to you, if you could just send in some donation for it, it would help their ministry. It's not to help me. The Lord's already helped me, but help them and read this to help yourself because Don, it is the word of God and it Amen. did help me. Well, you know, Ernie, we've just got about two minutes here. You know, uh, I just want to say thank you. And I want to tell there's somebody out there today that you might be a doctor and you got all the degrees, you know, that this man here had them degrees, but you know what? He got the most important degree, the born again degree, right? And that's John 3, 3 and 1 Peter 1, 23. And he's available to come speak in your church or like me, I know he is, you know, and I just want to tell you people out there today, we need help to stay on national television. And I'm not going to beg for money. I never have. You know me, right? I refuse to beg for money. But if you could help us out, and we, or those that have been giving us a dollar, five dollars, a hundred dollars, or whatever it is, we need it. But the point is that this ministry has been one thing, and this past, this, uh, he's pastor now too. We know he never knew he'd be a pastor on TV. But you know what? God loves you, whoever you are out there. It doesn't matter. You say, well, I'm a doctor and I did all this, I did all that. No, nothing. he don't have to go to a priest. He don't have to go to anybody else. Jesus said in John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father unless they come to the Son. So you got in that dark room, received Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. and you're born again. He would have died at the age of 40 what? Seven. 47, and the same way with me. And I want to tell you people out there, call this ministry. We will gladly talk to you, pray with you, ask Jesus to come into your heart, into your life right now. There's no set prayer. Just say, I'm a sinner. Like he said, in that dark room, Jesus Christ wrote his name in the <laughs> Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Hallelujah! Wrote his name in the He's a doctor. I'm an accountant. But you know what? Being good is not going to get you to heaven. Yeah. Being born again is the answer. God loves you. 724-981-7777. 1-855-981-9777. God loves you and so do we.